It's time for Spiritual Awakening Radio. My name is James Bean of SpiritualAwakeningRadio.com. Today's Satsang podcast is titled, This Invisible Spiritual Path We Follow. Using the public domain translation of the Gospel of Thomas found in Egypt, saying 113, we read, The Father's kingdom is already spread out over the earth, and people do not see it. It's a lament, really, about souls in a condition of spiritual poverty, uninterested in recognizing the spiritual reality already here, instead captivated by seeking for it in scriptures. There's this theme in the Gospel of Thomas about people seeking the divine realm in all the wrong places, in the future, in scripture, in some prophecy being fulfilled, up in the sky, in the by and by. They seek for it in prophecies about things happening in the future. They hope to see it coming soon in the sky with signs and wonders. And yet the birds of the sky, as it says also in the Gospel of Thomas, are closer to reality than they are. Birds are just flying through the air or sitting on a tree branch, just being in the moment, right? Not misled by books about prophecies being fulfilled. People aren't seeing, they aren't finding. Spirituality seems invisible and inaccessible. For them is not here right now in this living present moment. It's not that they are blind, it's just that they won't see. Or perhaps they truly believe that it is impossible for anyone to see. In every decade of the 21st century, in every decade of the 20th century, in every decade of the 19th century, going back through the millennia, and also true during the time evidently when the Gospel of Thomas was being composed, there's always been some book circulating with some new prediction about end times and when the divine realm will come. And none of these beliefs have led people to become wiser or to actually experience anything of divinity. As the mystic poem of Kabir, as this particular poem of Kabir says so well, the jewel is lost in the mud and all are seeking for it. Some look for it in the east, and some in the west, some in the water, and some amongst stones. But the servant Kabir has appraised it at its true value, and has wrapped it with care in the end of the mantle of his heart. And so, for those who do see, and those who do hear spiritually, having had the great blessing of being initiated into the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven, it's so very essential for us to stay close to those kindred souls also following the same spiritual path, part of the satsang community, a caravan of souls sharing this rare, unique spiritual journey. Fellow strangers also with us in this strange land of illusion we find ourselves in, where up is down, day is night, night is day. And for most, the spiritual life is put off till some other lifetime, instead of something to be experienced here and now. This is the spiritual path we follow, this invisible spiritual path we follow. Having a spiritual practice, a form of meditation that pertains to seeing the unseen realms with another kind of sight, the heavenly regions are not visible to those limited only to the outer material world of the five senses. In order to have mystic vision, we're going to need another kind of eye to be able to gaze into those subtle realms beyond. The German mystic Meister Eckhart once said, the eye through which I see God is the same eye through which God sees me. My eye and God's eye are one eye one seeing, one knowing, one love. And this is from one of my favorite Sant poet mystics of India, Sant Namdev. 
who said in a verse of mystic poetry, the Lord will make the pupil of your eye his home, and your eye will expand to contain the entire universe. Saint Kripal sang, As you look within, you will see a sky, or blue sky. If you look minutely into it, you will find it studded with stars, or you may see pinpoints of light. If so, try to locate the big star out of them and fix your whole attention on that. Then you may see the inner sun or moon. If so, focus all of your attention into the middle it will break into pieces and you will cross it. Beyond you will see the radiant form of the master or his master. That's a quote from the book Spiritual Elixir. Also from the meditation section of Spiritual Elixir, Kripal Singh, The inner light does not come or go. It is always there within. It appears only when we are attuned and concentrated and disappears as soon as there is the slightest dispersion. The light will not vanish if you just keep your inner gaze constantly fixed. We on this path of Sant Mat also cultivate the practice of transcendental hearing, a form of spiritual hearing that's inaudible to those who limit themselves to only what material ears can hear. As it says in the Surangama Sutra, an esoteric scripture of Buddhism, it is not the question of whether there is sound or not. Because the faculty of hearing is continuous, so hearing takes place whether there is sound or not. It is the real nature of the self as knower that perceives and hears independently of objects and sounds, respectively, and apart from the sense organs." Unquote. Sants have articulated about the closing of the three gates of the body to experience the inner sound. The three gates are eyes, ears, and mouth. Close these, and only then can one hear the inner sounds. According to Sant Kabir, close your eyes, ears, and mouth, and listen to the anhad nada, the inner unstruck divine sound. Guru Nanak said, close the three gates and listen to the reverberation of divine sound. Sant Maharishi Mehi and also Sufi Sants have used similar language to describe the process of closing three openings in order to hear the inner sound. Someone might ask, if the sound is not heard with the physical ears, then with what kind of ear is this subtle sound heard? When the mind becomes concentrated, then the physical sense of hearing becomes quiet and one does not hear, does not hear externally. This occurs because the attention withdraws from the senses and one is unable to pay attention to physical sound. Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras, India once said, a practitioner who is able to focus at the tenth gate for some time will experience the opening of the inner subtle hearing faculty. That inner sense of hearing is also known as the current of consciousness. The following represents another kind of lament about people not finding the kingdom, the present tense divine dimension, the spiritual reality in the here and now. For the spiritual practitioner, night is day and day is night. The mystics are on a countercultural path, practicing a different kind of spirituality out of the mainstream. 
In the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 2, verse 69, is described a reversal of day and night in the life of a satsangi, an initiate, a disciple of the living master. That which is day to the many is night to the sage. That which is night to the many is day to the sage. Some commentary. In ordinary life, the five senses in man seek to alleviate their thirst by participating in social life. In such cases, the waking consciousness is the day, i.e. the place of activity, while the inner worlds are dark, like the night. In the case of a yogi or yogini, the situation becomes inverted when the doorways to the subtle worlds are opened because then the inner worlds burn brightly and are full of activity, i.e. are the day. While the waking state seems dull and boring, i.e. the night. That which is night to all beings who are turned away from God, in that state the disciplined yogi keeps awake. And that in which all beings are awake, enjoying the worldly pleasures and prosperity, is night to the enlightened seer. Humanity may still be imposing upon itself demiurgical or self-limiting belief systems, religions and philosophies confined to this material plane of creation. Yet it is the birthright and evolutionary destiny of each and every soul to participate in the subtle divine worlds within, to become a child of both the outer creation, the cosmos, the universe we see all around us, and to be a traveler of the inner space, the kingdom of the heavens, the divine ocean of love, accessed within through a very special kind of meditation of inner seeing and inner hearing a bhakti or devotion to inner seeing and hearing and exploring the inner regions, traveling inner space. The Sufi mystic Abin Arabi once wrote in his Bezels of Wisdom, the Supreme Being brought the cosmos into being as constituting an unseen realm and a sensory realm so that we might perceive the inner through our unseen faculties and the outer through our sensory aspect." Unquote. We are, in other words, meant to be children of both worlds. We human beings are a tree of life with roots in the earth, but also branches rising into mystic skies. We are not meant to be confined to just material perception only and not seeing the spiritual aspect, but to be participating in both earthly and heavenly life during this life. Carl Sagan, the cosmos is within us. We are made of star stuff. We are a way for the universe to know itself. Said Kabir, the light of one soul is equal to that of 16 suns. Rumi once said, we are stars wrapped in skin. The light you are seeking has always been within. There are millions of nether regions and skies above skies. Man has wandered endlessly in his search. The Vedas, Hindu scriptures also say the same thing. The Muslim books speak of 18,000 universes but it is the same power that sustains them all. That's Guru Nanak from his morning prayer, the Japji. The following is from The Celestial Music, an introduction to the teachings of Sant Kripal Singh and Sant Mat, the path of the masters. A glimpse into the world of meditation and initiation opening one's inner eye and catching a glimpse of inner space, what the spiritual eye can see and what the spiritual ear 
can hear right now if they're willing to take a look. This new life of the spirit begins from the day of initiation into the mysteries of the spirit. The life of the spirit begins not with the theoretical exposition of the spiritual science, but by a practical demonstration of the spiritual plane of the spirit current made manifest. Here the invisible and inaudible life stream is made both visible and audible to the spirit within converting the atheist into a theist in the truest sense of the term. It is an imparting, it is an imparting of the life impulse and making it throb in every pore of the body. This coming back of the soul to the realization of her true nature and rising into universal or cosmic awareness beyond the walls of finitude is the true resurrection or coming to a new birth and a new life. To die in the body while living is to live in the spirit. A quote from Kripal Singh from Nam or Word, in the beginning was the word. That last sentence, to die in the body while living, is to live in the spirit, is referring to the meditation practice of Sant Mat that is followed by those initiated into inner light and sound meditation on this path of the masters, a form of meditation also known as Surit Shabad Yoga, the bhakti or devotion to the inner light and sound of God, which can be seen and heard in meditation. The music of the spheres, referred to by Pythagoras, Plato, Shakespeare and a host of ancient medieval and Renaissance poets and mystics, the concept of the celestial music, the basic elemental sound that was the core and essence of the universe, has been largely forgotten in modern times, but this book shows that in Asia it was never forgotten and remained the basis of a powerful mystic school that still exists, known as Surit Shabad Yoga in India. The author, through his own personal experience with the great living adept Kripal Singh, and through a careful and penetrating study of Kripal Singh's life and work, demonstrates the relevance of this ancient concept to the modern world, that the celestial music is not only the essence of the universe, but is also the essence of each individual, our original face, before we were born. Our original face before we were born. And that by finding it, we find our real selves. This master's system is little known in the West, but he was unique in his presentation and demonstration of Surat Shabad Yoga or the yoga of the celestial music or sound current, the primal manifestation of God in light and sound. He begins where all yogas and philosophies end, that is, in a state above the physical body consciousness or mind. It was essentially the same system as taught by Jesus, Mulana Rumi, Kabir, and Guru Nanak, and all other true and perfect masters who had come in the past, it is the means by which one can come into contact with the Word, as it says in the Gospel of John, chapter 1, and be led by this power to the kingdom of God within. That's a reading from The Celestial Music, an introduction to Kirpal Singh, a book that's now online, by the way. Send me an email. I'll be happy to send you a link to this book. The Celestial Music, an introduction to the teachings of Kirpal Singh. My email address is james at spiritualawakeningradio.com. This book is at the Internet Archive, so you could also find it by doing a search for the Celestial Music Archive.org, something like that. If you can find it that way, all the better. 
This is from that same book and is titled A Peep Within. I had no notion of the purpose of this gathering and little dreamed of the quite incredible awakening in store for me, the author writes. The master seated himself in an armchair at the end of the room and men and women squatted yogi fashion facing him, the men to his right and the women to the left, and I in another armchair at the back. The author here is describing his encounter with Sant Kripal Singh at a gathering, an introduction to the meditation practice. I don't think it's an initiation, but a kind of jyoti meditation, an introductory meditation instruction that Kripal Singh used to give out to the public from time to time, giving people a brief meditation sit where they can take a, a glance within to get a sense of what the inner light and sound meditation is like. Continuing now with this reading, without any preliminaries, he began talking in a very simple way, referring to the statement by Jesus that the kingdom of God is within us and asserting that this kingdom could be entered here and now. God himself in his absolute state could not be seen by humanity, but only through his primal manifestations of light and sound could he be realized with the grace of a living perfect master. In the opening chapter of St. John's Gospel, we have, quote, in the beginning was the word. This word created all the spiritual and spiritual material worlds from the highest realm of pure spirit to the lowest, the physical universe. The seat of the soul is at a point midway between the two eyebrows. It was through this center, also known as the third eye or single eye, that the soul entered the body at birth and would leave it at death. And it is here that our first conscious contact with the light of God would be made. All we had to do was to introvert our minds, still our thoughts, and focus our attention at this point between the two eyebrows. Watch and wait patiently, quietly, reposefully, without any strain or worry. Each of us, the master calmly stated, would be given a peep within, a conscious spiritual experience, each according to his or her spiritual development and receptivity. There was, however, yet another incredible experience waiting for us. In dismissing us, the master told us to reassemble in about an hour for another kind of meditation, this time for sound, the word, or the voice of God. If I was dazed and almost stunned by the revelations of the first meditation, what could possibly be the nature of the coming one, I wondered. I was thankful to rest quietly in a corner to reflect upon this amazing session and to regain a composure so powerfully but happily excited. Here the author is just describing his experience. Uh, he doesn't quite go into detail about the inner lights he saw during this first meditation. Sant Maud is fairly secretive and doesn't really uh, recommend people publicly talking about their inner experiences. But here this individual is going as far as he can to uh, not go into too much detail and yet uh, to describe the great meditation he is having at this public gathering with Kripal Singh long ago. Continuing now, we again assembled, the master seated in front as before, the men and women squatting on the floor, and I at the back of the room in my armchair. The master explained that the sound current, which St. John in the opening chapter of his gospel refers to as the word or audible life stream, emanates from God and vibrates through the whole of creation. By it, all the worlds, seen and unseen, were created and are sustained. 
With the sound there is light, and it is only through these two primal manifestations of the Godhead that the Supreme One can be known or reached. The sounding flame or the flaming sound is also known by the Indian name of Shabd or Shabd, Shabda. This sound can be heard only if a perfect master who has come with a special commission from God to lead souls back to him connects them with this celestial music, this Shabad. The original Shabad is one, and as it descended, it created the pure spiritual region, then the lowest spiritual material planes, of which there are four, it becomes five strains at the level of this material universe, but on the earth there are actually ten variants of this celestial music, and we should hear one of these. For some time nothing happened, but this time I waited patiently with absorbed attention. Then came a continuous sound from the right side, and soon swelled in an amazing crescendo, and continued unbroken for some twenty minutes. I may not give further detail except to add that at the end, after describing the nature of the sound to the master, and having his explanatory comment, I was filled with a blessed serenity and peace I had never known before. It was impossible to convey the joy and rapture experienced in this double cognition of a supersensual state. Here was practical vindication of the Master's injunction in his book, God-Man, page 91. Believe not the words of a master soul unless you see the things he tells about with your own eyes." Unquote. Another reading from the book, The Celestial Music, an introduction to Kirpal Singh. That Kirpal Singh quote at the end reminds me a lot of mystic poems of Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras, which also emphasizes a lot about seeing with your own eyes and only paying attention to those spiritual teachers, those Sant Sat Gurus, that have seen with their eyes being the competent spiritual teachers to follow, to listen to, to sit at the feet of. If someone is not experiencing the divine realm, how can they help you to experience the divine realm? If they don't see, chances are you won't see either. But if they do see, they may help you to also see, to also hear. Initiation into another kind of seeing and hearing. Coming up next, a brief exploration of the concept of initiation into the mysteries of the divine realm, being given instruction about the meditation practices. This is a short reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 2, using a very unusual translation called the First New Testament, Marcion's Scriptural Canon, Marcion's Apostolicon, reconstructed in an attempt to glance further back in time, to take a peek over the horizon to see what the manuscript of First Corinthians had to say at its earliest stage. We speak God's hidden wisdom in an initiation which God premeditated before the aeons for our glory, which none of the rulers of this aeon knew. For if they had known, they would have never staked the glorious master. But as it is written, things which eye saw not, and ear heard not, and never arose in the human mind, how many such revelations has God prepared for those who love him?" Unquote. That's taking a passage from the first New Testament, Marcion's scriptural canon, uh, combined with another reconstruction of part of that same chapter using the pre-Nicene New Testament 54 formative texts by Dr. Robert Price, 
what I did there was combine together those two to come up with that whole passage about being initiated into the mysteries to see what the the eye doesn't usually see what the ear usually doesn't hear what usually does not occur to the heart of man the master said to his students what your own eyes cannot see your human ears do not hear your physical hands cannot touch and what is inconceivable to the human mind, that I will give you. That's a quote attributed to Jesus, very similar to that passage uh, that turns up in, in the uh, book of 1 Corinthians about seeing and hearing from the Gospel of Thomas, a contemplative gospel for mystics. In the Song tradition, the complete methods and secrets of meditation practice are communicated at the time of initiation or diksha by a living master, a sant sant guru, a competent qualified teacher, one who sees, one who hears, or a representative of that master. A living teacher being fully acquainted with the landscape of inner space can impart to initiate candidates valuable guidance on how to safely make the journey of ascension to the inner regions, the heavenly realms, during meditation practice within. This kind of spiritual transmission and the details of Surat Shabad Yoga practice, inner light and sound meditation practice, are not found in books, not found in old scriptures of the past, and are not for sale anywhere, but are given freely to seekers by the living one, a living teacher. At the time of initiation, one vows to himself or herself that they will practice meditation each and every day. The spiritual path is a lifelong endeavor and beyond. Some key terms from the 2023 edition of the Sant Mat Glossary. Sat Guru, True Guru, a saint who having access to Sach Khan, the spiritual realm, the timeless realm of pure spirit, redeems lost souls, saints commissioned by their master or God Almighty to guide souls back to their true home, referred to here as Sachkan, the true timeless spiritual realm above mind, above matter. Satsang, another term, defining another term from the glossary, literally the association with truth to be in the company of the truth of a living master, typically outwardly through hearing the master's discourses and receiving his darshan or vision. Also, in the inner context, satsang means to be absorbed in the inner sound current of truth. In other words, satsang has an outer and an inner meaning. Out, outer satsang might be attending a gathering or watching a video or reading a book reciting some teachings, a, a spiritual discourse of a living master. But inner satsang is actually experiencing the meditation, an inner association with truth. Satsangi is defined as one who is attending satsang, is part of a satsang community, inner or outer, an initiate of Surit Shabad Yoga, a disciple, a follower of the path, Sangit or Sangha, congregation of followers of a master. Those who have received Nam initiation. The following is excerpted from a satsang discourse, a morning meditation talk from January 1st, 2023, titled Through Satsangs Given, We Come to Know Why We Have Been Given This Life and what is its purpose? It's by Baba Ram Singh. In the Kali Yuga, saints have adopted three measures for progress on the path. One is satsang, another is seva or selfless service. And the third is bhajan or meditation. The first thing is satsang. And there is a lot of importance of satsang because only in a satsang we come to know the true purpose of our life and that is experienced by the company of the masters. We come to know of the reality by listening to what the saints say in the satsangs. We come to know 
why we have been given this life and what is the purpose of it. When we come to know this reality, then that motivates us to go on this path and realize the truth, and then we follow this path. Each second of this life is very precious, very important. Kabir Sahib, in his Bani, in his hymns or mystic poetry, has said, I beat the drum and I repeat that with each breath that we are using, we are losing the value of three worlds." Unquote. So it is important for us to make the most of each breath, each second of our life. And we can do that when we listen to the satsang attentively, and we use that time for doing our bhajan simran, our meditation. So all the saints have talked of the greatness of satsang, and the saints say there is nothing equivalent of a satsang because the satsang is like a pilgrimage. And only in this pilgrimage one can wash the mind, the impurity of the mind, by going in the satsang. When we listen to the satsangs, we wash away the impurities, the sins, and we also reduce the burden of karma that we have built up on ourselves. Likewise, we reduce the burden of karma when we do seva, selfless service, and when we do our bhajan simran, the meditation, and once we are able to reduce the burden of karma, we bring about that purity in the mind which helps us on this path. So we should collect that wealth of Nam, and it is that wealth of Nam which is going to lead us back to our true home and to God Almighty, our Father. Nam is the only thing, the only wealth that one accumulates, and nobody can deprive him of that wealth. It cannot be taken away by family. It cannot be taken away by thieves. And nobody can steal it or deprive you of the wealth of Nam. So we should sit very lovingly in our meditation. We should focus at the eye center and do our Simran. Repeat the Simran in the mind. When we do this, the impurity of the mind, which has been cast on the mind by us for eons for so many millions of lives that gets washed off says Baba Ram Singh so in the morning when we wake up our mind is fresh and quiet and when the mind is quiet it is good for meditation so let us make the most of this time and sit and get connected with our meditation a reading from a Satsang Discourse by Baba Ram Singh on that which alleviates karma, washes the mind of the impurities that stand in the way of our spiritual progress so that we may progress on the path, go within and experience this invisible, inaudible kingdom of God for ourselves to see spiritually and to hear spiritually and make our journey back home again during this life, during our daily meditation practice. Concluding today's Satsang podcast, a reading from the mystic poetry of Kabir. This is from Songs of Kabir, selections of Kabir's mystic poetry made by Rabindranath Tagore, who himself was a great Bengali poet and did a great job selecting mystic poems of Kabir. Go thou in the company of the good. That's another definition of satsang. Go thou to the company of the good where the beloved one has his dwelling place. Take all your thoughts and love and instruction from there. Let that assembly be burnt to ashes where his name is not spoken. Tell me, how couldst thou hold a wedding feast if the bridegroom himself were not there? Waver no more. Think only of the beloved, says Satguru Kabir. <laughs> 